All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks uh, for joining. Um, yeah, we're bringing you another live event here uh, by HubSpot community and Ref Partners. It's in fact uh, the third uh, webinar that we're doing uh, in collaboration with, with Ref Partners. We've we done two, two uh, in the past, back in 2021, and they were a blast. So uh, we've invited them again to do a three part webinar this time. Uh, this is the first one called Becoming HubSpot Admin, the five stages of the admin, and we'll have two more uh, coming, I think, at the end of March, and then one also in April. We're very much looking forward to that. Uh, your speaker for today is Matt Bullion. Uh, you may have seen some of his content on LinkedIn. He's the co-founder and CRO of Ref Partners, uh, and he's also in the process of creating a new community called the HubSpot Admin. That's why we're doing this event as well. We love Ref Partners here at HubSpot. They are a solutions agency focused on delivering RevOps as a service. And uh, I mean, they're amazing. And, and I'd love to hand uh, it over to Matt to, uh, to kick off this ev event. Thank you, Jan. That was much too kind. Um, I'm going to share my screen so we can see it confirming. Y'all can see my screen. OK, uh, so. This is becoming, I put super admin. Uh, I think it's funny because inside any HubSpot instance are super admins, but this is becoming a HubSpot admin. And in this, we're gonna answer, um, I think a lot about this question uh, because we are, I'm constantly hiring HubSpot admins. Um, and, um, and I'm gonna set the stage for this in a second. So first, let's just go who I am. So we did it is um, I, uh, first off, my name's Matt Bullion, he, him. Um, I uh, used to, in the past, I was in the military and then started Rev Partners. And I love HubSpot. I'm like, I have lots of HubSpot certifications. The Rev Partners itself is our, our, our claim to fame is uh, like fastest tiering partner. But my, my whole point of this is what I really want to get into is um, what does it mean to be a HubSpot admin? And then how do you upskill and get better at being one? And the reality is, it's like we don't have a lot of resources to be able to understand first off like what like what is a hubspot admin and then how do you upskill and it just doesn't exist and so internally to rev partners like when we hire people i've created this like platform for people to upskill so what i just wanted to be able to share this at least our thoughts so today there's going to be a lot of theory uh but with the end we're in some practical but like the important part is i'm gonna give you theory and concept and so that you will have some actionable steps to say when you leave this to say, um, here's a framework for my understanding on these five stages of the HubSpot admin. It's like level one, two, and three, four, five, where I fit, and then very tangible ways that I can upskill and become in a different stage or different level of being a HubSpot admin. So hopefully when you leave today, that's what I want you to think, want to think about. This is a picture of what we of what Rub Partners does. It's not super helpful. The agenda. I'm gonna go over first is the, like the fact why being a HubSpot admin um, is like the new era and why it's a really cool thing to be at in today. I talk about and define what is the HubSpot admin, go into the five stages and the framework and how that's situated and what, what each one of those five stages are. Give some very practical guides on based on your base where you're at on those five stages, what you should be doing and how you should train to be calm and upskill. And then we'll have a Q&A session at the end. So number one, I, I like to use this term called bottom line up front. It's called the bluff. And the bluff here is when you leave, I want you to be able to answer this question. Does it actually make sense to get really good at HubSpot? Does it make sense to make it your core competency and what you're best at as a professional, right? Like for us to really think through that, that and be able to say yes and no to that question. Then based on that answer, how do, if I want to become really good at HubSpot, like how do I actually become like, what's the framework for me to live in and how do I understand what's happening? And then define as actually make a definition of who the HubSpot person is. So with the bottom up line front is we have these questions, but let's go ahead and answer them. <laughs> what I want you to leave today with is yes, it does make a lot of sense to get really good at HubSpot, which we're going to go into why. Upskill, follow the stages, which you'll see. And then uh, definition of HubSpot. And I just want to keep this really simple is it's a RevOps professional, which is his core to upskilling. It's a RevOps professional specializing in the HubSpot 
platform. And we'll go deeper into what that actually means and how that will look when you are upskilling yourself. Okay. So going to number one is answering that first question. We live in a new era. What do I mean by that? Is 2022 um, is different than 2021 and 2020. And this decade, uh, the 2020s, I have just prediction, and you'll see this, is that HubSpot is transforming from a marketing automation platform to a CRO ecosystem. I mean, there's supposed to be, I forget that by 2025, there's like a $3 billion, like there's going to be just the marketplace alone in HubSpot is going to mushroom. It's going to be very large and the opportunity there is very large. And so my point is, this is, we live in someone that's totally new. And so we get in this, this is an American instance, but like we live in a new era. I just like making fun of this is where Tom Brady's not in the Super Bowl, right? Like Tom Brady has retired, rest, you know, rest in peace, the, the greatest of all time quarterback, uh, but he's no longer in a Super Bowl. And HubSpot's the number one CRM in the world. And we've seen this in LinkedIn and HubSpot has put this everywhere because it's a really big darn deal. If you're looking at this top right, Salesforce, it's under HubSpot. Um, what's, and that's significant. And, I, and I'll go into more insignificance, but it's just like, we, this is a net new world. Like this is not normal. But I think what we've missed in understanding the new world is this next part. We don't just live in a world where HubSpot is the number one CRM. We live in a world where it's the number one marketing automation platform, where it's the number one content management system, and where it's the number three help desk. And I bet you it'll be the number one service help desk or service help desk um, in the next few years. And so when you look at that, like this is a HubSpot is complicated when you think about like it, it, it is serving lots of different functions for different users, CRMs, sales, market automation is marketing. CMS is like web ops and marketing service is your customer service. And each one of these has different functions. Each of these has different disciplines. Uh, but the, the fact is there is, they're the best in the world at all four. That's incredible. <laughs> Just stop for, that's incredible. Um, it makes a lot of sense to get a good HubSpot. But let's like deep, dig deeper. So like, what does that, best in the world mean to a modern go-to-market B2B tech stack. And so I just put some stuff here. Honestly, if you look at, I think it's like a, a modern B2B tech stack has over like 22 or 30 systems, but this is just me just putting, right? So a, a regular tech stack, traditionally, if you're gonna scale and you're $10 million AR, you're going higher, it looks like this. Your CRM is Salesforce because you're gonna scale off HubSpot, right? Which is not true, but that's, you're scaling off HubSpot, you have Salesforce. Your outreach for your BDR, your SDR team is using outreach.io. Um, your marketing automation platform is probably Pardot. Um, if you have Salesforce, it could may, maybe HubSpot. Your CMS, WordPress, your form using Gravity Forms, CPQ, you have like a deal hub. Your proposals are DocuSign or Conga. Your service using Din Sendesk for your customer success, maybe in Gainsight. Your call recording, you have Gong. Your intent data is Bombora. Your list building, where you're getting your list, is Zoom Info. Your data operations, how you're cleaning your data and transforming it, is InCycle. And if you have any like product like growth, you have a reverse ETL that has high touch. And this is like a very not complicated what an admin in a, in a traditional sense, uh, when, they, when they say Salesforce admin, has to know about, like be able to understand this. Um, this is what it looks like now. <laughs> It replaces nine systems. I say it, HubSpot replaces nine systems. When we talk about value, this is the value. But I, I just like, I wanna see it this way is the HubSpot admin has to like, is needs like is knowing and managing just as many processes in the background, just in one tool, which gives them more time to do strategy. And so the HubSpot admin is also like, is a point like, this is a new era where this consolidation of the tool stack is starting to happen. HubSpot is the catalyst that is causing it and will start, especially as they go, as we go up market and we get uh, more enterprise deals and we have larger sales seats. Uh, like this is going to occur and the demand for HubSpot admins, uh, specialty and especially 
uh, that HubSpot as a specialty will be increased as well. Let's say this, this is the truth. And this has been like HubSpot's, let me show you this, like there are 13 systems. They're now four, they're now um, four systems, reducing nine systems. And so when we think of easy to use CRM, what an easy to use CRM platform that I just showed you is HubSpot. It's why I, it's why I, I used to be a, I used to be a Salesforce fanatic and I was really good at Salesforce and converted to HubSpot because of this, because it's because it's truth and easy to use a CRM. Here's the issue. Uh, it's not, not even an issue, but like it's an easy to use CRM that talks about how easy it is for end users to adopt it. Like HubSpot wins because it's easier to adopt. It is not necessary, like, but an admin to like, you can still overbuild and over-engineer HubSpot. You still need someone to run all these processes in the background to make sure your data is clean. Like the need for an admin, easy to use is not anti-admin. Easy to use actually means your admin can do way more for you and that you can have an admin that's actually able to do strategy and think strategically about administering your stuff. So like I just making this point. And as we go into this is just to dive even deeper in here. HubSpot is a CRM and it spans multiple disciplines. And so when you look at these five hubs um, and I put to the right, and this is a small like touch of these RevOps processes, but like a, each one of these, and sometimes they, they don't necessarily fit in every specific hub. So I did it in like the, the discipline and we're gonna talk more about these disciplines and the importance here. But these disciplines are sales ops. You have to do account mounting, forecasting, pipeline management, prospecting, sales capacity planning, lead routing, list building, CPQ, proposals, pricing, et cetera. Inside your CRM, mostly those are in sales hub. You have to do marketing ops. It's the same litany of operations that a HubSpot admin must know how to do and leverage inside this tool that has lots of hubs and features and activate via processes. It require, HubSpot requires revenue operation professionals to fully activate is my point here. And so this is a new era where this was not always true. If you are a SMB business with 10 people, you can get sales hub and marketing hub together and you can do that without an admin. But as you grow and you have all these processes happening in the background, someone owns the process and someone owns the tool that effectuates that process. That is RevOps. You're creating data. Okay, so my point here is, um, I'll just show you this. This is a, this is, these are great with words, but putting it into a picture on actually how it actually fits for a business. It's like, this is, this is almost any, like a generic, 80% of all B2B companies have these boxes or like RevOps processes. You'll notice none of this has anything to do with a the tool. These processes must fit within a tool. And so a, an admin of, of any sort is able to think about these processes and then effectuate them in these tools. So I just bring this point is like now HubSpot can do all of this. And I'm not even mentioning the like, delivery ticketing portion. This is just sales and marketing together and someone activating each one of these processes. Um, the HubSpot admin can visualize this and activate HubSpot. So this comes to the rise is HubSpot as a platform has five unique hubs with unique features. It has processes that span multiple revenue operation disciplines and departments like some of these Disciplines and processes exist outside, like in the multiple processes. The ecosystem of HubSpot is demanding as, as they're growing, has more and more integrations that we hadn't talked about. If you think about this, like these native integrations that we need to put in, say like a Slack integration or a, a sales loft integration or a, um, a um, what, whatever other integration you're going to have via a custom one with a custom ERP, where you can have NetSuite or you're going to have Infor, Infor whatever you're doing, Infor, there's these larger demands for integrations. The next is HubSpot's going on market. They're scaling upwards. Um, and part of that, like they're now a CRM that can, uh, that people can scale with. And so this just increases the demand and this leads to the rise of the HubSpot admin. So conclusion, like there has never been a better time to be a HubSpot admin. Uh, the HubSpot admin is a real thing. 
and the HubSpot admin uh, will be in demand. And there's not, there may not be enough of them, or at least people are self-identifying as them. This is a really good time. Um, just like it's actually a really good time to be a Salesforce admin. Like the fact is people need these revenue systems to effectuate their goals uh, because every company is a tech company now because you have to, you're operating here. HubSpot is the platform they're going on and they're going to need people that understand both those processes and how to create those systems. And so recommendation, uh, get really stinking good at RevOps and HubSpot. Um, it's a great career move. Uh, and that is my... Uh, that is my belief 100% and why we're like, why rep partners exist. Like this is in my mind, um, one of the best career decisions you can make is getting good at HubSpot. So how do you, that's great, Matt, but let's go to next. Like, what is the super, like, what is the HubSpot admin? Like, how do you actually learn those things? How do you, how do you get good at it? What should I be doing? What are practical next steps? We'll get there. Let's start here. Just defining. And so I call this the admin equation. It is um, a RevOps professional, which we'll define, plus a power user of the system equals name software admin. Let me give you an example. Um, and this is, a, this is like defining it further. A RevOps professional specializing in a specific software. That's the RevOps, that, like, that's the admin equation. So if you take that, let's give an example. RevOps professional plus Salesforce power user equals Salesforce admin. Now, Salesforce is a really good job of like trailhead and making their certifications like very difficult to get. Thus, there's like the stratification of how many Salesforce certifications you have. And it's like, and if you put Salesforce admin, you can, you can immediately have a job, right? This is about to happen for HubSpot. And it's a RevOps professional plus HubSpot power user is HubSpot admin. And I think a lot of what we're missing when we think about HubSpot admin is this RevOps professional portion is being a power user does not mean you're a HubSpot admin. Or at least you're not on the right, like you think about, uh, it means you can be a HubSpot admin, but it means like there's stages and there's stratifications. I'm gonna help us think through the stratifications on how you can truly become, you may call the HubSpot super admin. Um, and this is, this is the thought that I just, the thought is like, okay, that equation means absolutely nothing to me besides that I see two words, um, and I still am not any clearer on how this works. So to make this clear, I'm going to define what a RevOps professional is, what a HubSpot power user is, um, and then we'll we'll and, and we'll go from there. So here we go. I'm going to spend some time on the slide just going through this. It's going to be very specific. Um, and this is I spend a lot of time. Uh, I actually did a webinar with HubSpot earlier. Like how do you hire a RevOps Jedi. And so I have a very specific way I test for all these, all these characteristics um, and, and, um, through our hiring process. And, and, but these are the buckets. Like if you're becoming a RevOps professional that you do, and it's agnostic, it's independent of any software you ever touch. A RevOps professional is literate in these things. So first I want to define it. Is a RevOps professional implements, this is the most important thing, adoptable processes. So this is like a RevOps professional can think like a product manager, understands the UI of what they're building and they create adoptable processes because if you don't have something that's adopted, it doesn't exist. They create clean data because adoptable processes, they synthesize the data, creating hindsight, insight, and foresight. They visualize that data and then they make tactical and strategic recommendations, which is executives. They make... They make the flywheel go vroom, if you would. Like they, this is the secret. Now, there's a lot of RevOps professionals out there that don't even define themselves as RevOps professionals uh, because they don't know the word. But really, it is someone that creates adoptable processes, that creates data, use it, and leverages that data to to create revenue. So here's how they do it. Number one, industry best practices. So within RevOps, there are disciplines. There's sales ops, marketing ops, web ops, success ops, fin ops, right? There's these different operation disciplines. A RevOps professional um, knows at least one of these really well. Um, and then uh, like can talk, if I, if I was talking to a RevOps professional, I'd say, hey, um, what are the three key KPI metrics that you want to judge in your pipelines and how would you set that up so that you can measure them? Uh, and they would have an answer like, hey, well, it's average deal size, average uh, the sales cycle, and 
uh, closed wind ratios. And with the, that formula, I can create velocity, right? They, they just know those things. That's sales ops, right? And I just, I have sales ops, um, I have sales ops bolded because if you're thinking about like a red ops professional, like in, in, in the outside, sales ops and the ability to under, understand pipeline metrics really is like this. It's like just a really key portion that you need to start learning if you want to call yourself rev ops, because that's like, that's like the most, that's the thing people are understanding the most. And it's going to be like conversion ratios, close one ratios, MQL to SQL conversion rates, et cetera. And so they know at least one of their disciplines, uh, a, real, a rev ops person is starting to understand more than one. I think it's important to say like sales ops and marketing ops, marketing ops and web ops. They're, they're, they're familiar with best practices like, should I do NPS? If I should do NPS, how do I do it? How do I do customer SAT surveys? Like they could have opinions and have answers for those questions. Number two, they are data architects. And what I mean, data native. So they know how to set up a, they, they know what a foreign key is. They know what a primary key is and they can draw an ERD with many to many relationships and many to one relationships. And they know SQL. Um, this is almost, this, this portion is almost becoming where um, if you, if you think about uh, just trying to think of analogy, um, if you could, it used to be like, can you type, right? <laughs> like if you can't type, you can't work in the modern, it's like very difficult to work in the modern modern day culture. Uh, this is almost where we're going to get, right? Is a robots professional is data native. And this is just going to be something that is like a baseline expectation, right? You, you understand how data works. You can, you can read and write SQL. Number two or number three, the word citizen developer, a robots professional, you know, like may be able to look at code. They can fix some HTML every now and then they can like, they can see how things work because they understand SQL and how databases work, but they are really good. No coders. They can go into Zapier. They can go into Integra Mac and they can make, and they can make anything work. They can go into workflows. Like it's just a, like they know how to know code and they are part of the citizen developer revolution that has democratized developing. Uh, and they are the benefactors of that. And part of what's allowed them to, to like rise is this ability to understand data well enough that they can use low code or um, like low code solutions to effectuate change and revenue. This next portion is the go to market motions. Uh, and I think this is important. And I think we miss this is they fundamentally understand go to market motions, how to figure out a target addressable market or a TAM who their um, ICPs are, their ideal customer profiles, the personas in those, uh, and then the pain points and or the triggers and the messaging without. So they could create a go-to-market. They could say, I want to launch this product uh, for this market. And I think that these people are going to buy as per this percentage. And they can do that. Um, and they can have that conversation. And they also intimately know, okay, what's the difference between a B2B or a B2C, B2C or a B2D to C or a B2B to C, right? A business to business to consumer and how each one of those different go to markets affect uh, the messaging they're providing. And they may have to do like two sales motions. And then that's important because the way you set up HubSpot is completely different. And the metrics you're looking at are a bit different based on your go to market. So it's just important. Like they know those and have thought about them before. Product managers. RevOps people know how to run products. They know DevOps principles. They can run large implementations that change behavior and they have a PMP or they have a Scrum Master certification um, and they can they know how to create like take business requirements and turn them into technical requirements. Um, and so when you're thinking of like you're putting these together is they there is, I'm just gonna put last one. They like to draw things. They like, they, they draw, they're confident drawing uh, in mapping tools like Miro, Lucidchart, or Visio. And so you combine this. This is a really hard hire. And I think this is this is helpful, right? Helpful, but it doesn't start thinking, stratifying into tiers or giving you very specific things to do based on where you're at inside of a level, which we're going to get to. And that's why I created the framework called the five stages of HubSpot admin. But there is one other part, right? If you go back to the equation, there's the power user part. So what does it mean to be a HubSpot power user? Let's define that one. This is, again, these are independent. You can do all these things and not be a HubSpot admin. This, this, this makes a good Salesforce admin. This can make a good Marketo admin. This can make a good Microsoft Dynamics admin. Like these skill sets transcend wherever you are or whatever piece of tool you're using. This does not. This is, this is you being really good at HubSpot. 
and they're separate, um, but they work together. So the HubSpot power user can translate business requirements into HubSpot builds, troubleshoot any HubSpot issue they get, and, and they bleed orange if you cut them. Uh, so let's put these in buckets so we understand. So the hub knowledge is number one, is they know every, they knew all the features and in a hub, the pricing tranches, like, hey, when do I need to switch from uh, starter to pro for pro to enterprise? When should I get a new hub? And they save people money. So a really good admin um, is not going to upsell someone in their HubSpot instance unless they really under, they really understand, like they really, really, really need to. Number two, they translate, is they translate features into processes. They don't talk in hubs, they talk in processes. So if I'm talking about lead routing, I'm not gonna talk about, oh, what you, what you really need is HubSpot, marketing hub. Now I'm gonna say, let's read lead route. We need round robins between those two. We then we can put them in a sequence and do that. And then I'm at the end, I'm gonna say that will require sales pro hub. I mean, so sales hub pro, but they're translating the, the, that layer and they're not talking in HubSpot features. They don't talk HubSpot features. They talk in process. Builders, as you see this, they, they, uh, they do have that. They, they are strong no coders. Uh, troubleshoot, they can diagnose problems very quickly um, and be able to fix them. Usually any HubSpot problem they can fix in under a week. They are very confident in creating dashboards and reports. Uh, they can a really... It, it, at the highest level, they can create almost any report if they have the requirements in five minutes. Um, and they run at least one of their meetings only from a HubSpot dashboard, not Excel. They can draw and visualize the HubSpot ERD on demand. So if you just say, hey, Matt, go draw the HubSpot ERD, meaning the um, entity diagram, relationship diagram, uh, I can visualize it, but I can also like draw it out for you. And they can almost at any point in time do a demo for a minimum of like two hubs, right? They can like, hey, Matt, or, or, or hey, Brian, or hey, Kimberly, can you uh, do a demo? Like I have these needs and they could like demo HubSpot and show how it would fix a felt need for someone. That's a HubSpot power user. So you combine these two and you get awesome. And, uh, but it's still difficult to understand how do I like upskill and all of this at the same time? So you have these two things and that's like a unicorn hire. How do you find someone that can do all those RevOps things and be a HubSpot power user? And I think it's, this is again, helpful, but this is like showing you an end state. It's not showing you how you actually upskill. So the still question is, that's great, Matt. How do, how do I become a HubSpot admin? You have not helped me. I just know that I want to be one. And that, it seems really great. This is where we get into the five stages. So let me set the stage, let me set the stage, let me set the groundwork. So this is a framework for you leveling up as a HubSpot admin. And so why is this needed? Why, like, am I, what I've seen, like something like this, I haven't seen anything exist like this. So number one is, this is a new profession. Revenue operations is, is, is the idea of revenue operations is that new. HubSpot as a, full platform. I mean, they changed their platform messaging last year and they only have recently put out all these. They only recently became actually a platform that can help. Like this is not time school. This is brand new. Number two, and we'll get into this on our, our third webinar series, but there's a wide range of starting points here. And my point is you can start as a developer and be a HubSpot admin. You could start in event marketing and be a HubSpot admin. Like you can start in design and SDR in sales an oper just uh, operations coordinator doing tickets inside, or even like SEO marketing. There's these wide varieties of starting points. So it's hard to know based on where I am in my, in my, in my journey, how do I get to upskill? And so that there's just a need for a framework and a path. Next is cross-functional. Is It's not just being a power HubSpot user. It is also being a robots professional. And that being a robots professional really means becoming an executive. And this like, and it, and it, it's, it's more, it's like, you have to understand finance. You have to understand marketing. You have to understand sales. You have to understand service. And you can't just understand one function and truly be a, like a, 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 a you'll see the stages, a like master or a sage HubSpot admin. So when we're thinking about this, how is this organized? Um, I've tried my best 
this is probably uh, a 75% solution, but I try my best to keep this very easy and actionable. So to do that, I've created discrete numbers, meaning one, two, three, and yes, no questions that you can answer uh, for these stages to say, am I this and if, or, um, or am I not this? And if I'm not that and I can answer no, then I have a very tangible thing to go and do to get better. Um, I've also separated between power, like uh, user abilities. Um, so it's between like RevOps abilities and then power user abilities. And to cross one stage, many times there's requirements in both. So you might be a stage four HubSpot power user, but you're, at, but you're a stage three RevOps so that you're actually just stage three because you can't go to another stage unless you meet all the requirements. Um, this gives you a clear, discrete ways to upskill. And why are there five stages? Great question. Because I said there was five stages. <laughs> My point is like, this is a developing framework uh, and we could add more stages. Um, and this, is just a, this is a point in time where we're trying, we're trying to create clarity and for places to go. And so five stages, maybe more. It's just this, in this way, this was something that made sense when we are making it. Okay, so what are the stages? I like naming things. Um, I specifically like, I read lots of like lit RPG. I used to play a lot of video games. Um, so when you think about stages, like power up. So stage one, I like to name it. You have the initiate, the apprentice, the adept, the master, and the sage. And these, each of these five stages correlates to some actions. So stage one, and it's hard to see, but stage one, I'm going to walk you through this. More, I'm going to go through the description and I have a full, like actual um, uh, Excel document that we'll look at that shows you like what this looks like in an easy to view, like pricing page way. But the initiate is a competent individual contributor that is learning HubSpot. The apprentice is a high performing team leader that is actively upskilling and pursuing RevOps excellence. The adept is a leader that is developing business and submitting technical HubSpot um, mastery and technical mastery in HubSpot. The master is an, an executive. So this is like, how do I become a CMO? How do I become a CRO? How do I become a VP? This is like, you need to be in a stage four for you to be, for you to be the, be there. This is, can ru run a revenue operations department in HubSpot. In stage five, I almost don't have a definition. These transcend, these are complete unicorns that transcend the leaf um, that are thought leaders um, that you should, that you are paying to tell you how to do things. Like these are, these are truly unique individuals um, that have dedicated their entire lives uh, to RevOps and to HubSpot together. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to work through these and no, I actually have like, how, like I have specific tasks on these next we're going to go through on how you get better at each one of these. So let's look at this. So um, you see it's broken up into RevOps professional, HubSpot power user, and then you have five stages. So let's look at stage one, then we'll go to stage and we'll go. So if, number one, as you're understanding these, how many functions, if you remember functions, I was saying sales ops, marketing ops, web ops, success ops, how many functions do you know if you just were asked, you could list off and be able to implement best practices? So when you start, the answer is zero. Um, and you're looking at these. Um, do you have a Scrum PMP? No, and I'm not going to go through these. I'm going to go through them as we're saying yes. But for RevOps, like you're not RevOps professional at this point, you're learning, like you're just now learning what it means. And so most of stage one is all about starting to learn HubSpot. And so we get on the HubSpot is how many, how many hubs have you launched? Meaning like you built out, you thought, so you've, uh, you've touched at least one hub. You have two certifications in the HubSpot Academy. Um, and when you think about custom reports, I mean, you're still, someone has to like, it's taking you 24 hours to get through and create a report that works. Stage two, the apprentice. This is you, you know, you can, you now know at like one of these RevOps functions pretty well. And you could talk to someone about, I know how to do lead scoring and I know best practices for that. You also have started to draw processes and have a, a Miro or Lucid chart certification and you can draw processes. And you now have built and know how to build no co integrations because you've had to build that in your system. And so that is Zapier, Integromat, name. There's a bunch of these that you're doing. And so like you, that is a yes. You now are, you can go in somewhere, you can provide value. You can begin to talk about what you should do and build it autonomously. And then in HubSpot, uh, there's been drastic, there's been some 
not big changes, but you now have a minimum like five certifications. Uh, you, you can build a custom report in dramatically less time because you know how you're starting to understand how things are organized and you're very much more familiar in the system. Stage three is probably one of the biggest changes. Stage three, the adept, this is, remember, this is when someone is, um, this is when someone's starting to lead a team. Um, and, and this person is, uh, this person in terms of like a rev ops, they can read a p &L. I think it's very important. We talk about businesses as the profit and loss statement because they're starting to manage budgets. They can look at it and then organize their resources. And so I, we never talk about this. Like you have to be able to read a PL if you want to be stage three and if you want to be HubSpot admin and provide value for your business. Number, uh, the other one is they now can build a go-to-market plan that identifies the ICP, your personas, your messaging, and they could give that to their leadership and say, here's the product and here is who I think we should go after and why and build that. So a lot of times that may be messaging for an entire website and be able to write that good. In terms of HubSpot, the biggest change in HubSpot is there's a, they are, they're becoming technical experts. Like they're honing the craft. They have 15 certifications. They can do a demo um, of, of HubSpot um, in any, at least one hub. And if you give them a question in HubSpot, they can probably answer it in about an hour or with some custom report. And, and, they, um, and, they, can, and they can create a custom um, object in HubSpot. Uh, if you ask them or you can explain it, they can explain the reasonings and why. Um, and so that stage three, like this is a big difference where you're starting to lead a team where you're, you're proficient. I mean, this is a, this is a manager um, individual that starting, could potentially lead a team, but is definitely like leading the, it can lead the build of HubSpot build. Stage four, the master. These are executives. Um, these are, this is someone that you can hire into a VP of revenue operations role, uh, potentially even a VP of marketing role, a head of sales role. Um, and they would run and be in, 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 and do extremely well as a HubSpot admin. Um, this is, they ha now have a they're scrum certified and they, or they have a PNP certification. They can read, you give them a PL statement and they'll be able to ask really good questions about, hey, why is this ratio off? Why is this budget here? Uh, they can read SQL. Um, they can, um, and they can do, yeah, and then just like difference. The biggest difference here is that like, they have, they can run big, large projects and they can read PLs is the fundamental. And you'll notice at the top, the number of functions is they now have worked in sales ops, marketing ops, and customer success ops. And they feel pretty confident of best practices in all three of those. You think the biggest change is in their, their HubSpot technical proficiency. They can create custom objects. They can draw the uh, HubSpot uh, ERD. Uh, they have launched and they have launched and built out Four different HubSpot, uh, four different HubSpot hubs in the past, and they have twenty certifications and can do ten demos. Uh, I mean, do and do two demos uh, of any of the hubs and be able to do it. And so this is someone. I mean, this is an executive that could run a business, but also is really good at HubSpot. And this is your stage four. Your stage five is literally yes to everything. Um, and this person, uh, and this is the ideal of where we want to go, right? They know marketing ops. Web ops, sales ops, um, and web ops. They have a PMP, can read PL, can read and write SQL queries, can do loot, can draw, can do full go to market plans and actually like build out a budget. And like they could technically do a pitch if they wanted to start their own business, right? They could have a, a full forecasting model. They can build no code integrations. They know how to do custom objects, ERDs. They've launched every single HubSpot hub or touched it in some capacity. They have 30 certifications. They can demo at least three of the hubs. They can do, you give, you give them a custom report and they're going to, you ask them a question and they're going to be able to answer it in another five minutes. And if the data, if the data is there um, and like, so when I'm thinking about stages, like these yes, no's gives a very clear way on how you upskill. So you could probably clearly see where you're at here. Um, and begin thinking, okay, what do I need to do? Where am I weak? And what do I need to do in order to become a HubSpot admin and upskill in these stages? I think so what's next as you think about that is I, I just wanted to give some very specific ways to train on this. And so you'll have this document and we'll send this out afterwards. Um, it is, how do I actually train to become those things? And so what we talked about in those upskills for RevOps is you have these like best practices, uh, like how do I learn how to do PLs? How do I read PLs? How do I, uh, I mean, how, how do I get project management? How do I, how do I learn SQL? How do I, 
it's all here. And so I've gone through and I've created links to all classes that I've taken in the past or have validated. Um, so exa example, um, I, I am both PMP and Scrum certified and been through those and I, I can validate these. SQL, I did not know SQL uh, and, and I started doing the LinkedIn course in SQL. So I have a link to it and if you click, it'll go. Um, and so I think all these are ways. What I wanna point out to you is if I, was, if I was to focus like the most important things for a robots person is I would do two. It is number one, learn relational databases. And so I have here um, how to like where you're going to learn those. Uh, your ability to visualize databases and understand data architecture will be, will demonstrably change how well you can do and how quickly you can do anything in HubSpot. And if you don't know it, I recommend doing it. Number two, join some RevOps um, communities. You'll notice there's no certifications for RevOps yet because it's still new. And so the best places to be are in communities like this. Uh, but I, these are like RevOps communities, right? They're honestly, they're all Salesforce communities. <laughs> uh, but Salesforce has been doing RevOps for a bit longer. It's like more mature. So you can ask these questions and they're going to give you answers. So it's RevGenius, MSP, Pavilion, Wizard of Ops uh, to join them. That's like my recommendation for you and ask any question. Hey, how do you do lead scoring? Hey, I'm building out a pipeline. What KPI should I be looking for? Like uh, searching the internet is not the best way of doing that because uh, SEO has ruined everything. <laughs> uh, the best way of doing that is going to communities and these people literally jump on a call with you and answer your questions. Number two is how do you become a HubSpot? How do you become a HubSpot? I think I'm supposed to do this. How do you become a HubSpot admin? Um, specifically a power user. So I've put, I'm going to put, I'm going to say all three of these. Number one is um, learn, like practice drawing once you understand like the HubSpot ERD. And so what I've put here is HubSpot has a, on, on their API resources, they have what it looks like. And then I actually click, I have a, Rev Partners, like a drawing that I've done for this, where I, you can give it and um, and I, you have access to this. So just like practice drawing, understand the relationships between them and how things go push and pull for it. Uh, Hospital admin jobs, they're starting to they're starting to be here. So like if you want to this, like the best way to become to like get into this is you need to dive in and get a HubSpot admin job. It will force you to answer these questions and naturally begin to go up those stages. Um, number three is you notice HubSpot Communities was not over on the other ones. Like HubSpot, HubSpot Community, get in it, ask questions, attend these events. You're clearly all, anyone that's here is, is attempting to become an upskills HubSpot admin. Like that's what it takes. Um, Kyle Jepson, uh, I'm going to point him out because he has, um, I learned more product releases from Kyle Jepson from his tips and tricks. Like go to him, follow him, and you will get a daily digest of how to do something you've probably never thought of. So it's like, hey, how do you use Ops Hub for data sets to create custom formulas where I can calculate commissions inside HubSpot? Mind blown, right? How do I, um, um, how do, I do programmable emails to auto enrich emails using Clearbit? I think we did a whole presentation on that, but like, he'll go over that and talk about it. Custom objects, just do a few, like get in a demo environment and have fun, like get this. Uh, it will come and help you understand how this ERD is. There's some courses. I did a how-to video that I like um, done by, I forget it's like D, um, HQ Digital. Uh, but also there's a HubSpot, it's not a course, but it's a knowledge document. Like it leads you through pretty easily. You start creating it, mess with it and see how it works and why it matters and why you should even do it. Just start playing around with it. Um, so th these are the specific ways to train on all. And I'm going to go to the, that is, that's it for today. I'm going to do the next for questions and answers. Before I start, I just want to re reminder is becoming a HubSpot at a uh, I, I, last one, by the way, HubSpot community. I call it the super admin or the HubSpot admin community. Um, like, so uh, there is this something that's starting, it's, it's launching, it is total, it's net new, but it's like, it is a community that's on like a, in Discord uh, that where you can get on a call with someone and ask, and like literally in the moment, be able to ask them any question about HubSpot. And so that's happening. Um, and that's what um, Jan had mentioned at the beginning. And so more details to provide for that. Another, another point here is, is, as we conclude, is this is, my point for this was, here's a theoretical understanding of what the HubSpot admin is. They're a RevOps professional that is really good and specialized in HubSpot. That understanding 
what makes the RevOps professional, what makes a HubSpot power user, and then the stages on how they combine for you to upskill with then very specific training material for you to start executing for you to get better. And I wanted to, it's theoretical just by nature, but I want to make it as practical as possible. So you have any questions about like, just hit, like, please send me a note in LinkedIn. I love talking about HubSpot admins. Uh, hit me up on LinkedIn is the best way. And I will send you a note, talk to you, perhaps even get a call with you. And I, I'm the resource for you. So with that, Jan, I want to, let's move to questions and answers. Uh, and if, if there's anything specific that I can answer in the moment for the HubSpot admin community. Yeah, uh, thanks, Matt. Uh, great job. I mean, uh, pe people in the chat were very, uh, <laughs> it was super insightful and there was a lot of like liveliness in the chat. So I appreciate everyone commenting and, uh, and sharing their, their comments and their thoughts. Um, a couple of questions have come in in the chat and also in the, in the Q&A regarding the recording and the presentation and, and all of that. And I just wanted to say, we will send those out tomorrow. Uh, the recording will be uploaded on our YouTube channel. Um, and yeah, the final presentation will be sent to me as well. And, and you'll receive that in your mailbox as well. That is, of course, if you haven't subscribed to any of our mails. But um, yeah, you should be receiving them if you registered for this event. Okay. And that brings us to uh, the first question, which is by uh, Ben. Ben says, how is HubSpot going to continue to improve the admin experience, specifically having greater control over individual user settings, notifications, meetings, and so on? There has been movements in this area in the last year, but I'm hopeful that more is coming. Well, I'm not HubSpot. Um, what I will say, the one thing I like the most that HubSpot, so first off, HubSpot literally comes out with something every two weeks um, and they don't announce it and you just like pop in and you figure it out. One of those things that happened to me that I really enjoyed specifically about how that um, uh, user settings um, is the ability to be a user, right? You can go in and say, I'm Matt, but before I had to log in with their credentials. If you're a super admin, which I love some, HubSpot super admin. I love that. I just love being super admin. You can come in and you can, you can, um, you can log in as a user and then reset their settings for them. And so you can experience their issues and that's a really good way to troubleshoot. And it's something that uh, it's, it's like a, a quick trick uh, that um, the HubSpot did. Second statement, um, HubSpot is, is, is going up market and they're competing with Salesforce. And so they're making investments. So literally anything Salesforce does, there's, I don't know their product roadmap, uh, but if they're going to fix it. Um, and I think it has already, they've already demonstratively shown like just in how they've done ops hub and how they've like fixed that one thing for settings. I just have complete confidence. Uh, and I guess my point is there's not a risk in getting really good. And every issue I've ever had about three months later, it's fixed, uh, which has been awesome. Yeah, I, I can confirm that. Um, I'm, of course, not in tune with our product team or with our product roadmap uh, as much as, as a marketer, but I can say that um, if there's something missing, we are definitely working on it and uh, we'll, we'll fix it soon or improve it soon. I, and I'll, I'll make this comment. I know your transition to the next question is HubSpot, and y'all know this, but it's like HubSpot is, is the only CRM company. I say only. They're like the, one of the only, like they're a publicly traded billion dollar company that actually still builds products. Like most acquire. And that's what whole, that's where the cobbled and crafted. And so it takes a little bit more time to fix stuff, but when it's fixed, it's easy to use. Um, so I think there's this given, there's given take. I'm just, uh, it, 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 I, for, there has been more and more products pushed out that I've just been excited about. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gushing with HubSpot blue, orange, please stop. All right, uh, next question is by Heather. Um, will you be providing the Excel sheet for the five stages after the webinar? And yeah, I suppose we'll, we'll include the presentation like I just said uh, tomorrow. So I'll mark that as done. Um, cool, the next question is by Daniel. It's actually his, uh, his second question. Um, what's the best process for becoming a HubSpot admin? Uh, what are the best ways to find the resource to do so beyond the certifications or is it more about having an account and practicing like you would with salesforce and trailhead and I, i'm yeah you, you answered already a lot of this during um your call but i'm wondering if you can add something else as well 
Oh gosh. Um, in that deck, I gave a course a, uh, for every single one of the yes, no discrete values to get better at. Uh, and just the, uh, I would add on top of that. So at Rev Partners, we have, we call it becoming, uh, becoming sharp. So we think of like ourselves as, I mean, take the analogy, we're like swords and we need to be really, we need to be really sharp. So we're dangerous. And so we're called getting sharp to become dangerous. The, one of the ways to, so we give all these resources, we give these same resources, but there's a, there's this like next portion. And this is where the HubSpot community portion comes in. Like the HubSpot admin is to become sharp. You have to be like, it's, it, it takes more than existing in your instance in your company. You must have other admins that are also swords or that sharpen each other, like you know, steel, like you, iron sharpens iron. And the the way to do that is you, you're like you may you're like, hey, can I set up time? I'm gonna just draw this ERD with you. Hey, I have a custom object and I don't know if it's the right choice. Like, how should I build this? And should I should I put it here? And what's the foreign key? And does this make sense? Like, that's how like it's those it's in that nitty gritty those questions, and that can only occur in a community. Um, and that's where that helps my admin idea. Like that's where that's, that, that's where I like, that's where I get that. Um, and I think it does take that to really get sharp. All right. This is uh, the first question that Daniel actually asked us uh, back in the beginning of uh, the presentation. Daniel asked regarding the modern era tech stack, HubSpot has an ingrained tool that outreach provided provides. Yet companies are buying outreach as part of their tech stack and using Salesforce. So how is HubSpot going to show they can offer the same or better service and capabilities as outreach while including other functions in their CRM? At the cursory glance, outreach seems way better than what HubSpot offers by default. So um, this is another presentation that we gave with HubSpot. It's called the RevOps Manifesto. If you haven't seen that, I recommend it. So it's like, okay, it, 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 it's like on top of this, we talk about those best practices. Uh, it starts to get into best practices. So if I was talking to somebody, and I do this all the time, if I'm talking to somebody that's thinking about outreach Salesforce or HubSpot, uh, it's like, what is one of the, one of the principles, I think it's like, I think it's mandate. I think it's tenant number two is the less databases, the better. And that is such a powerful statement. Not that, but it's difficult for non admins to know that. So let me, let me, let me, put it into place. So when you do outreach, you're creating data and every SDR, every time you do a sequence, every time you hit that, every time you create an email, every time you add someone in, every time you have to like get your, get your contacts and get your leads in, get your list in and where you load your list, that's a new database. It has a fundamentally different ERD that an admin must manage. Salesforce and the connection between outreach and Salesforce is a full-time job. So, period. And so when you think about like, the, like, is it really better if the data doesn't work and you can't get any foresight, you can't get any insight or foresight or hindsight and what's happening and you have to take everything out of Excel and now you're not even working in the two tools and you haven't got the adoption you need, that's not RevOps. That's called, um, that's called uh, looking at the features, not understanding the processes in the background. And so that's why we need admins uh, that can understand that and make a recommendation. So HubSpot, put everybody in the same database, create, adopt, create, actually have something that is adoptable and have your SDRs and your AEs in the same database. Uh, and then you can create data sets that tell you what's actually happening. What's my close one ratio? What's my MQL? Where's my data? It's so much more beautiful. And the functions, it's like, uh, HubSpot actually can do almost everything out, outreach can do, um, period. So it's just like, it's like, it's all walking them through that, but you can't do it via hubs because if you talk in hubs, you lose because, because you have to do a multi-hub sale for that one. And if you talk about hubs, you're going to confuse people. You just need to talk about outreach. You're doing this, you're doing prospecting, and then you're doing conversion. And so you must be able to talk process. And at the end of the call, you then say, and by the way, it costs you like half the cost because you're only doing one system. And by the way, you only need one admin, it's the HubSpot admin, instead of these two to do this. Okay, I can go long winded. This is like a very, this is a topic I love talking about. All right. Uh, next question is by Liz. Can a marketing professional be a HubSpot admin? Yes. 
hopefully you see that and you understand like um, there are uh, a marketing. So by the way, it's more philosophical. I think sales and marketing are coming together. And so, so part of that is um, to be a good revenue professional, you must know marketing and you must know sales. And to be a rev, RevOps actually has both those in there. It's just, you think those stages, how do you transcend? And that's where one of those things was, was you need to know more than one function. So you will be capped uh, in your ability to provide value into an organization if you only know one function. And so you need to upscale into other functions. However, you're still a revenue operations professional and you can still be really good at HubSpot. There's just a different stage that you're in. Uh, the next question is by, uh, well, someone anonymous. So uh, I don't know, but uh, the person asks, hi Matt, is this your definition on a HubSpot admin? Uh, a Salesforce admin, for instance, doesn't need to know SQL. Perhaps there will be other roles like HubSpot architects and consultants. RevOps is cool. I'm just not sure the depth of complexity here will be necessary to be a HubSpot admin. What are your thoughts? Yeah, hopefully, um, that's why I think defining was really like defining in states is actually really difficult and it, it must be broken up into a framework with stages. So hopefully in showing you that, it's like, I think reading SQL is level stage four, writing SQL is stage five. And I think it's a misdemeanor is a RevOps professional that knows SQL I'm just like, I'm just gonna make this, it, it will likely be better. I would rather than someone who does it because what is a RevOps professional except someone who is creating data and then, and then, and then visualizing data and to visualize data, you must be able to see tables and put those together, transform them. Do you need custom objects? And then, and then be able to create report from that. That's SQL. Um, and I, I would, I was just like, maybe, you know, more SQL than you think you do, because to be good at RevOps, like you're thinking in SQL, it's just like, at what point do I actually need to say, okay, I need to re-SQL and reading SQL will make me just that act will make my brain better able to like speak into revenue operations. And that's, so yes, you do. You might not know that you already know how to do it. All right, uh, we have a question by uh, by Fabian. Uh, can you point to can you point to one or two things that HubSpot needs to improve? Well, one of these we already said. It is on the um, part of being an admin for like Salesforce, for instance, is our team and user permissions and the ability. Like, there's two things specifically the ability to create permission based on fields and like the permissioning needs to. There's a bit more. Uh, nuances that you can do in Salesforce. Uh, that's number one. Number two, and you'll probably hear this, custom objects today, uh, it doesn't, like the interface can be scary. And so if I ask like for HubSpot, what would I, like what is it? I think they're actually working this eventually. It is to create a more native experience to no code uh, custom objects. So there's like two things and there's some more, but those would be two things I would think that they're actively thinking through. All right, and I'm afraid uh, we are at time, so I won't be able to to fill the uh, additional questions we have in the in the Q and A. Um, but you know what? We'll, we'll probably discuss them among ourselves and, and answer them and send them over to everyone on on the call tomorrow. Um, so yeah, that way uh, you get all of the, the answers there. Uh, but it, we just don't have time for it today. Um, yeah, I'll I'll hand it back to you, Matt, to uh, to close us off. Okay, I appreciate everybody's time. Again, if you have a question and you want to have anything uh, about becoming a HubSpot admin uh, or like other communities you can be in, hit me up on LinkedIn and I will talk to you. I will spend time with you and lead you like and give you as much as much as I can uh, because HubSpot admins are awesome and I like talking to them. All right, thanks everyone and hope to see you uh, later this month for the second session. See you then. Bye. Yes.